Hello everyone and welcome back to the Goofy Foot Garage. Uh, I appreciate everybody's uh, feedback on the last video. Got a lot more views and a lot more feedback than I ever expected, but I appreciate it all. Everything except for the thumbs down, which I don't understand, but you know, that's your own personal prerogative to have that choice. But anyhow, as you can see, it's been a few weeks since my last video. And what happens when I don't touch my vehicle after a couple weeks, it kind of turns into a shelf as does my work table, workbench, whatever. So I gotta clean all that crap off. And uh, up here in Minnesota, it's mid-October and it is 30s outside. It is horribly cold. So I've shut my garage door and I'm gonna turn my little space heater on and get some, get some heat in here. So that's how we're at. But today we are gonna work on trying to find or figure out how I'm gonna get this roof to be one fluid roof. So as you see, I have that one little section here that was from the cutoff. I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with that. I just had a thing sitting up here, probably to that effect. But anyhow, that's what I'm planning on doing. I might have to end up cutting out, um, probably gonna cut out all the top center section of the roof and then just build up around the edges. And then when I got the edges all cleaned up and got that shape I like, then I'll start filling in the, the middle. But so instead of having using that piece, which I'm just laying around, I'm going to try to use what's left of these door panels, the internal skins. Oh, I'm sorry, external skins. A little, a little slippy there. But yeah, these uh, the external skins, they got kind of a little contour to them, as you saw. So you see it's got that little bit of a contour. I wonder if I can use that a little bit in here because obviously the roof has a contour. So I don't have an English wheel or anything for there, but I do have that awesome little Harbor Freight three in one that has the sheer brake press and then damn, wow, that little guy, the little roller. So I can roll metal, kind of contour it a little bit that way. Or I just use the old fashioned way and just bend over my knee. We'll figure out how that goes. So anyhow, welcome back to my garage. Welcome back to Fiona. Welcome back to my extended cab project. So I'm gonna start trimming off the skins of the doors and uh, I'm gonna find some old cardboard. Problem is all I have around here is this, this cardboard, which is the corrugated cardboard. I'm looking for like the flat cardboard, like you, you know, your 12 pack, you know, 24 pack, whatever, and start making kind of a template because my concern is I don't want to get too close to the drip rail but I'm trying to get rid of this seam that seam all the way across I'll probably fill in get rid of it so I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do a patch panel in here to get rid of this because it's got a little bit of a roll going back try to get rid of that but keep the drip rail and not get too close because I don't feel like welding them behind a drip rail so we'll figure out how I want to do this and uh, yeah stay tuned and we'll see how this goes Working on trying to make that roof, as you can see, it's a big split. I'm trying to fill that in, make one solid roof out of this vehicle. Uh, where the extended cab is, you can see it sticks up a little higher. It's kind of almost buckling, so I'm at the cut back all the way back there. I did kind of some marking on it. I'm gonna basically cut the middle of the roof panel out on both the main cab and the extended cab. Just cut all that out. It's just kind of binding. It's causing you know, the roof to bend and, and go in different, different ways. I don't like it. So what I did is, as you see here, that is the rest of the exterior door skin on the spare doors that I had. Uh, that is the front half of, of the passenger side door. You can see that's where the hinges were, ping, ping. And then that's the other one right there. So what I'm gonna try to do, try to keep this truck as much, you know, old steel as possible. Use those panels to fill in right here. Kind of have it marked off where I want to cut, cut right about that line on the main cab and that line on the extended part and put in a filler piece that connects those together. Keep that roll that goes along, the radius roll that comes along here. Keep that roll as much as I can. As you see, that's kind of a tight radius compared to what was originally on the door. See the door's kind of got a, a larger radius, so I'm gonna have to Take that panel, throw it in there, my three-in-one from uh, Harbor Freight, which has got a slip roller on top here. 
this little guy right there. So if I can roll it, give it a little bit more contour. Not quite sure if I can form it on the back. I'm not gonna figure that out, but right now I just wanna get that sheet in there and get this one solid piece. Do that on both sides. And then uh, another thing I just did is, after I cut the skins off, I cut this as the inside frame of the door. So if you're looking at the door, this is on the inside there. So I cut that off and this is the passenger side. And as you can see, it mirrors the, the back side of it. So instead of having to go through and what I was trying to do is cut the pie cuts on that extra piece, just use this thing, just use the rest, rest of this window frame, have that matching contours, matching lines. And we might have to do a little bit of work on the top. Oh yeah, do that. And I end up, I'm thinking, I'm gonna end up cutting this off, probably where I, this little notch is out, cut that up, off across all the way and move this window opening back because I don't like how wide this gap is. That's a, that's a, not gap, but how wide this pillar is. That's pretty thick. I want this a little bit narrower because I'm not gonna have a lot of steel on this side to weld this skin to. So I'm gonna try to even that out. So make this side and this side even so that window looks centered in the back there. So that's another thing I wanna, I wanna try to tackle tonight. So that's my goal is to get the roof panel done and start working on the corner windows on both sides. So we'll see how that goes. You guys, thanks again for watching the videos and stay tuned. We'll see how I go with this roof and uh, yeah. All right, unfortunately, this is gonna be a very short video because I am getting frustrated and I'm you know, not quite sure what to do here. So I'm gonna take a break and then uh, come back, clear my head, think about things. As you can see, the window frame has been cut out for that little corner window there. Put in a patch panel. Again, that was the skin, outside skin of the spare doors. My problem is this section, right from here to here, is flat. Then from the door jam forward, it tapers in a little bit. Because these cabs are not square, they're shorter up front and wider in the back. So that top piece right here, over here, well, that piece right there, from here in, it has to taper in inside, I guess. And I've been having a hard time. So I put some relief cuts in there, trying to get it to, to relieve a little bit so I can get it to sit in there. It kind of looks like it fits, but it's still ugly. Those relief cuts are ugly. But yeah, I kind of need to play with a little bit more. I still need to cut out the middle of the roof too, get that out of the way. But for now, that's what it looks like. Again, I'm gonna have to take some time off and think about what I'm doing here. Cause then again, I'm gonna have to come in here and figure out how I'm gonna weld that seam all the way in there. I don't know if I can do the cutting butt cause it's on a, it's a radius. So trying to do a cutting butt with the radius with obviously a cut off wheel, not that easy. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do there. And then down here, I'm not gonna keep this section down here. I'm probably gonna cut it off almost to where that little, that line is that, uh, uh, the seam, because I'm sure the window, when I put the window frame in, there's gonna cover it, but probably go a little bit lower down about here. So when, when I put the window frame in, it'll, you know, comes in. Cause I think the top of the window frame comes in just above. I mean, it's gonna be level with the door. So the top of the frame is gonna be up here somewhere. But anyhow, that's where I'm at. I did the same thing on the passenger side. I didn't do any relief cuts on the passenger side because I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to get that to sit flush. You can see that it kind of sticks up on the front edge because it's tapering in towards the front of the pickup. But the back edge looks nice. Everything's nice and flush to the to the cab. Again, same thing over here. I'm going to probably cut off, you know, right about there. Everything down below is getting cut off so I can put the, the corner window in. But anyhow. So yeah, this from here to there tapers in. So I gotta figure out how to get some relief cuts in here to get the skin to move in and not buckle, which it's doing. Uh, I'm not a professional at this, so I'm trying to learn as I go. So anyhow, that's it. I'm gonna call it a night. It's uh, 7.30 Sunday. I gotta go in, get some supper, take a shower, get ready for my nine to five tomorrow morning. And then, uh, do some research and figure out how I can get those relief cuts to look good to this roof line. We'll look better and go from there, so. What a difference a week makes. It's a beautiful fall day up here in Minnesota. 
Last week it was maybe reaching the 40s. Today, we're gonna be in the 70s. It's crazy how that works. Uh, so guess what today is? Today is work on Fiona day. So what I did is I ended up taking off that panel that I had here. I had Clico at the end and I was getting frustrated because it wasn't fitting because obviously the extended cab is flat section here and then it tapers in towards the center of the windshield on the regular part of the cab. So I was having a hard time getting that fit. And what I was, did is use that and I put some relief cuts in it. Didn't like it, was looking ugly, getting pissed. So I needed some time away. So guess what I did? Talked about not having an English wheel. I now have an English wheel. Guy on uh, Facebook Marketplace was selling one. He was actually an interior guy does car interiors and he bought this trying to do some body panels and he <laughs> said he pinched his fingers a few too many times and got pissed at it and just put it in the corner of his shop and it's been sitting there for a while so finally put it up for sale and here it is from my garage so now I have an English wheel and along with that ran down the Harmer Freight and got the shrinker stretcher kit so they got a shrinker and a stretcher so when I roll that panel through the English wheel like this, look at that. I made a panel, cool. As you see, it forms, it's got a nice little contour to it. But on the edges, you'll notice the edge is kind of wavy. That's because the material is trying to shrink there. And that's where the shrinker stretcher comes in. So I can shrink that material and get that radius bend. So what's gonna end up is right here, it's gonna be straight. And you can see where the little English wheel marks are got going in here. I'm trying to get this to curve downwards on this side because this goes around the door here can i show you put this puppy in place kind of about right there and see how it kind of curves there i gotta get that radius down a little bit more it's a i guess gotta make it bigger it's a little bit too tight there but i cut it cutting around the door jam i'm gonna probably trim off a little bit more here and obviously i'm gonna cut more off the back uh, and then go from there so anyhow this is what i've been doing today forming this on the english wheel you can see it's kind of got a little bit of a hump there in the middle which i'm trying to get real but that's what the english wheel is doing it's stretching out the metal and bending it in towards the windshield the center of the car the center of the pickup tray so now i got that panel going what i'm gonna have to do now is set up my shrinker stretcher somehow my plan was to build these to hang off the side of my three-in-one, that sheer brake press roller. And that thing, can't say too many good or bad things about this three-in-one. So if you're ever looking at getting one of these from Harbor Freight, might want to think again, because obviously I was having a hard time just breaking 18 gauge steel on it if it was more than like two feet long. It was really tough to get it to, to get a nice clean 90 degree break. And then I went to use the roller last week. That's another thing that set me off. And in here, there's a little bushing that holds this that rod in, and that bushing broke. So this rod is bouncing around. The only thing holding it in is this little guy. So if we turn that off, that bushing in there is gone. So that rod is just, yeah, see, just bouncing around. That pissed me off. So I spent $700 on this thing, and it is not worthless, but I don't think it was worth the money. So guys, yeah, word to the wise. Don't buy one if you're looking at getting something that can do decent body work and decent panels with. But if you're looking for some just cheap stuff for, you know, 20 gauge or a lot of like thinner metal, probably work better. Anyhow, setting up my shrinker stretcher set. And I'm going to try to shrink that panel down a little bit, help it curve a little bit more, and we'll go from there. So stay tuned and we'll see how this goes. I am so glad I bought this English wheel. Um, don't mind the cotton candy machine in the back. Got that for our wedding. Long story. Anyhow, that tool, I'm glad I picked it up along with the shrinker stretchers. That's the stretcher part right there. I have this shrinker. It's kind of hard to see in my messy garage. Bolted to a two by two square tube, put in a vise. Was able to use that to shrink the metal down a little bit to make it form fit. And look what we have here. Nice follow the roof contour. Follows that line all the way down into where the door jam is, which is nice. And on the back, I kind of cut it at a little bit of an angle so it meets on kind of the corner of the, the roof so it's not just square with the roof. Kind of hard to see that. So, yeah, 
that worked out well. I got a little bit of a hump in the middle, but I'm thinking after I get this thing all welded in, I'll do a hammer and dolly and try to get that to fit a little bit better, but I'm actually pretty pleased with that. So now what I'm gonna do is I might just end up uh, tracing out with a, a scribe where it is and cut out because I can't do a cut and butt along this edge because it's so close to the door jam and it's radius. So trying to get a cutoff wheel in there is gonna be difficult and I don't have like a little air nibbler or air like Sawzall. So I don't have that. So I might just end up cutting up to here at least by hand with a cutoff wheel and then the rest of it, I'll do a cut and butt all the way around and go from there. So we're looking good. We're starting to get this in one solid cab. So stick around. All right, so yesterday I had to leave off. I had things to do, I had to go take care of some business. And I left off with just getting this panel clicoed in. Got it formed pretty well the way I like it. And uh, after I did that, I looked on the inside and realized I'm gonna definitely have to cut out this door jam. Obviously that was from the extended part all the way up that seam. And uh, on the inside, there's a couple other things I gotta cut out. If you look at it, there's that rib right there that goes across the back of the cab that's tied into that door jam. And then there's another one right down there that needs to get cut off. I don't know if it's spot welded or what. Get those cut off so then get this door jam out. And then down there, there's that big chunk that's kind of connected from the door jam. I don't know if it's connected to the back of the cab, but it, it, there's a little lip on the corner of the cab that it's kind of attached to. So. If I cut down that seam right here, like this seam of the door jam, cut all the way down and then cut around the corner of the cab, that should get that all out. But then there's those two ribs like I showed you, I gotta cut out so I can get this thing, this door jam out. I know people think I should use that and keep it in there. And that's the passenger side door jam. Use that like a C pillar, but uh, you know what? I don't think I really wanna keep it in. I wanna cut it out and then just add on to these ribs. So there's that rib and there's that rib. Just add those on against the skin uh, all up to the actual door jam of the pickup truck. Use that. Because if you and know anything about these F1 cabs, that rib is actually not attached to the outside skin. You can see there's a big gap there, but it is attached to the back skin of the cab all the way across back by the window. Same thing down there. It's attached to the back skin, but when you get to the corner of the cab, it's not attached to the corner cab or the side. It just kind of wraps around and attaches to the door jam. So what I'm thinking is I might cut off here where it stops the uh, spot weld into the back skin, push it out so it does attach to the side panel, side skin, and come all the way around, oops, all the way around into the actual door jam. So have that rib. Well, this one won't because that's where the window will be, but that one has to somehow. We'll have to get that attached all the way across to where this one is. See, this is the original cab rib. So if I cut that off, it makes some extension. I'm not sure. So I need to call that stuff anyways, because I want to get this door jam on. So I've been kind of blabbing on long enough. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut some of that stuff out on the inside and go from there. So. Stay tuned and uh, we'll be right back. All right, so I kind of lied. I didn't touch the interior ribs. I didn't touch any of that stuff on the inside. Still there, door jam for the back of the cab, still there. Started playing with the English wheel again. I started forming this panel. Really not liking it. I know the, the fluorescent lights are kind of throwing it off, but it kind of gives you a little idea. It's kind of got a little uh, hump and then a dip, hump and then a dip, and then it goes up. So. I don't know if I gotta roll it more down the middle here to give it a little bit more contour. I don't know, it just, if you look at it, you can kinda see a better profile. It just got that you know, dip here and a hump there to dip there. Not liking it. I'm getting tired, I'm getting frustrated. Uh, it's getting late, I'm hungry. So I think I'm just gonna call it a night and uh, end this video here. So guys, I appreciate that you guys all watch my video and all the support I'm getting a lot more views than I ever thought was gonna happen on this this project. So guys, thank you very much for that. I enjoy reading all your comments and uh, any questions. I try to answer as many as I can. So guys, I appreciate it. Hopefully I'll have another video uh, a little bit, you know, 
a little sooner than this one. I think it's been about a month since I posted my last video. So hopefully I'll get another one on here soon. And I know this one didn't have a lot of content, so I really apologize for that. Haven't had a lot of time to work on it, and these corners have been kind of throwing me for a loop. So anyhow, rambled on enough. You guys have a great night, and I will see you guys soon. Have a good one.